think he's just in a good place with his game. And, you know, you saw him enjoying a lot of things in that last match. Of course, he was winning most of it, but even at the beginning of the match, just in a good place overall. And it's a little obvious on the table, but pretty obvious overall. The way he's playing, it's inadvisable to lose the lag against him. Look at this. First break off, open table. Hey, presto. Yeah, if that's anything like the pace in the round of 16 against Shaw, should clear this table fairly quickly without a mistake. Doesn't really look like a whole lot of problems. Just bring this out to the center of the table. And that's another thing, really. I mean, he's he's gotten out of line at times with the cue ball, had to come with some shots. Of course, he's known for that. But most of the time, he's had the cue ball on a string. And he just hits the pocket so pure. You know, they talk about ball strikers in golf and that's what Joshua Filler is in pool. Rapido, speed pull, a la Joshua Filler. Mario, he was blanked, just sat there, powerless. Filler is just a, a serial winner of titles. He has been for quite some time now, and his strike rate this year has been simply extraordinary. Look at this as well here undefeated in six matches he's had some tough opponents as well I think his toughest match was against Rafael Val in the second round a junior he used to compete with on a regular basis in the end he had to pull off for me the best shot of the tournament so far the cue ball was on the side cushion he potted a two that wasn't easy found a gap between two other balls and went down perfectly for the three nine combination that won him the deciding right rack and got him through Joshua Fuller to break leading one right to nil Watch out, cue ball, and kind of wondering when, well, th that ball on the side was going a lot of times for him in the last match. And this will be funny. A lot of times when these top players are faced with this long rail bank and it's sitting really nice. Now Josh is stretched a little being the lefty, but it's going to be hard for him to pass on shooting at this. Just they feel like their chances of making it, you know, 75%, something like that. Now he hit that ball a little thick. That's why the cue ball didn't get past the two for shaping the side. If he gets, gets a little more clean to the pocket, I think he gets past the two. You see him raise the hand there. and Not that it was hit poorly, but he's a pretty hard critic of himself. Well, he completely and utterly misjudged that. He tried to play cushion first, two off the cushion into the three. Yeah, caught it a bit thick, maybe anticipating a little more slide off the cushion from the two ball. And our first look at Mario, he and Mario, he's been on the big stage. Of course, a World Cup, a lot of success there with Alvin Ocean and you know, made a Moscone Cup team a few years ago, but unfortunately didn't get to play. Had a great week last year in a Euro Tour event coming into here. So that will, of course, have probably helped him through this event. He has twice a World Cup winner in partnership with Alban Auschen. 2017 and 2019. And let me tell you, he wasn't the sleeping partner on either occasion. He contributed. 
Yeah, I think, you know, besides a few shots here and there, 2019, I thought he carried the team. Um, I think Alvin would tell you the same thing. Mario, a pretty humble player and really not a weakness. Really solid in almost every area. Now, no one on earth probably as straight a shooter as Josh, so he's going to be lacking in that department. We'll see if it comes up, but just a really quiet cue ball, smart decisions, and one more. Well, he's out for today is bright, and if he continues playing like that, he's outlook is also bright very good indeed filler misjudged a shot he misjudged it grossly in fact and from there he had no compunction but to come back to the table and tie things up this is the shot that filler messed up he wanted the two off the three and he came nowhere near actually hit the three on the incorrect side yeah that's what i was going to say phil and I don't, i'm not sure why exactly maybe Maybe thinking about where the three was going to go, trying to hold the cue ball a little more so it doesn't get near the rail. You can see now how the path of Mario he into this position, the quarterfinals. Yes, he's played some solid pool, and if he won this match, it would be a surprise, but it wouldn't be a shock. No, not at all. Mario to break one racket. I don't have the record in front of me for these guys, but they've played before, and I... I would have to say that, that Mario has, has won matches against Filler. Well, solid break there. They just kind of poured in the pocket. He's got a little piece of the three, it looks like, Phil, and we'll get another look in a moment, but I kind of feel like he may be able to go at this and have a chance to make the six as well. Yeah, great camera view there. And I think, like I said, you don't have to call it nine ball. You just have to make a legal hit. Ever, anything goes. And he's got a chance to make two balls here. Should be just kind of a high ball. Come right off the six, kind of straight down the table. five Euro Tour or something like that. I know he's won four, I believe. I thought maybe he got his fifth. But... Extension, please. Yeah, and of course he won a, a big event in Ohio last year also. He's one of those players who's just below the elite, but capable of getting there. Yeah, my introduction to this young man, uh, a few years ago I made a little run at the US Open and I won my first two matches. I think it was Corey Duell and Earl Strickland. And I saw his name and I thought, well, maybe he gets a little lighter. And the guy behind me at the tournament board said, oh, no. You're facing a three or four time Euro champion. I said, oh, sweet. Super nice guy, though. Nickname is Panda. That one mistake from Filler. And he starts to flow. He might be nicknamed Panda, but he's not pandering to Joshua Filler.
just one seemingly innocuous miscalculation at this level of world-class pool can cost you not just the rack in question, but also plenty more down the line. We'll see whether that comes to pass. Right now, though, the shot we just saw from Joshua Fuller, entirely uncharacteristic. Thank you, rack four. Has led Mario directly to the loss of one rack, indirectly to the loss of another. And now Mario He looking to push on. Yeah, not the best opening there. I didn't really see much of a flaw in the hit. I and mean, of course, all the guys are cutting him a little bit, trying to pocket that one in the side. The eight does trickle in. But we're going to see a bit more of a safety part of the game to start game number four. This is a little touchy. I mean, a lot of times this type of shot is a pretty easy safety. You're going to play the one down below the four, nine, and two and bring the cue ball up the table. But the six is a big ball to block the one trying to travel safe. May bank at this, actually. Okay, pretty nice. May have left a little piece, though, and we know at this level it doesn't take much. Predictably slower going on the other table, on table two. Jose Alberto Delgado and Mieszka Futunski are one rack each. Futunski having won the opener. Yeah, and here he can see this ball, right? But that doesn't mean he still may kick behind it. This is really odd and funny. Besides trying to run the cue ball, maybe between the six and the five backup table and leave him long, I guess, maybe. Josh will take that, I think. He may have left a sliver, but not much. Four nine grouped together, that's a tough one. Mario not much, taking much time here, so he must have a pocketable one ball. He's got to kill the cue ball a bit. Oh, he tried to come back into that ball to take care of that problem I talked about. And he came out smelling like roses. And the man from Austria looks pretty comfortable out there, Phil. I think he's one of those players, not by his fellow players, but by the, the general pool public, who is somewhat underrated. I always think he's a really dangerous opponent for these top guys. And if he were to win a major matchroom event such as this, I think he would fit the bill. Yeah, absolutely. And he's just the type of player that doesn't ever, you know, fall way under his game. You know, some players that have a really high gear, very dangerous at times, but Mario just seems to be dangerous all the time. Super solid. And we'll see how he plays this. He may track the cue ball some three rails with inside English. He's close to it. He may just pinch it back. But the nine being there, it's a little dangerous to draw this if it gets away from you. You've got to be careful. Yeah, he made sure that he wasn't going to get behind that nine, maybe over the nine. But he's playing at a pretty nice pace as well. It's a straight. Now he's close enough to it. He should be able to cheat the pocket if he chooses so. Pretty perfect speed there. Just a one rail positional play here. You can come to if you choose. It is confirmed a Super Mario hat trick. Having lost the first rack, Mario He has won the next three.
impressively to boot. Of course, with the race to 11, there is some form of luxury of breathing space, but Filler will not want to fall too far behind. There you can see on the split screen, over on table two, Jose Alberto Delgado is 2 1 up on Mieszka Fatunski, although the, the left hander from Poland has a wonderful opportunity to level the score. Funnily enough, I think, don't know whether you agree, Jeremy, Fatunski for me is in exactly the same bracket as he, Mario He. If he were to win a title, I would not be surprised in the slightest. Yeah, and there's a lot more players in that bracket than maybe people think. And I think there's a lot more coming. I think the new break rule has given some of these players a little more time at the table in some of these big matches, which is huge as far as improving their games, getting that experience. Now, Fortunski's, Fortunski, excuse me, he's been on the big stage for a while. He hadn't quite had that huge win. It is level board, all the twos on table two. As Mario He knocks a couple of balls in, but look at the nine obscuring the two. Yeah, and you'll wonder, you know, Josh made a mistake with that two ball off the three. He made a little mistake with the safety. You know, does, I don't think Mario really wants to take this jump shot on. I, I would rather push out somewhere and make make Josh really earn it. The problem is, where do you push out? I mean, it's such an open table. The two not really on a rail somewhere. Josh able to make balls from almost anywhere. He's looking at maybe the kick shot because the kick shot lays. Push out, Cole. Okay. I'm not sure what that rollout's about. I don't think he let him see the bottom of the two, and if Reset he did, seconds, please. it's a dangerous shot with a scratch, maybe. Oh, he's got a lot of the ball. But this is a funny push out. You could easily scratch here. This is a thin hit. Key to this shot is don't let up on the stroke too much. And uh, that's the one thing in the match against Jason Shaw that I was really shocked about. Jason rolled out to some really easy kick safeties, and Josh passed him. And Mario made that look very easy, that shot right there, that snooker. A little surprised Josh didn't take it himself. Well, we all know, and of course, everything is comparative, but we all know that the tactical side of the game isn't his favorite. No, not at all, but you have to recognize what's going to happen. I mean, and I think Josh does, but... And I wonder if he has, you know, a theory or something going on there that certain shots he just passes on, he feels like he can kick out of them. That needs to go a little bit. Nah, that may hurt. Josh may cut at this. And Josh is looking to bury a big shot to get going. Expecting to catch the nine a little bit. If you notice, he hit the two a little thick to the pocket. That's why he went by the nine. Okay, he could shoot at this three nine. Watch the two ball hit on the bottom end of the pocket. That's why he didn't catch the nine. He hits a little more to the center. He's going to shoot at this combo and run the cue ball behind the six eight, I believe. Maybe he was just playing the safety all in all. Well, the crowd were ready to applaud. Then they weren't sure. And those immediately behind the shot know that the, the six is just about blocking a clear path to the three. 
I mean, I can't quite tell. The two rail scape is a little odd here. Extension, that being the left please. side rail than the bottom rail. I think he's going to go one rail at this. Two rails isn't bad, but you know, on your club table that you can really judge well, two rails is what you may play. But I think one rail here trying to kick this ball in. But the good thing is if he can come across it, the cue ball should come at the six and the eight and create more action like that and possibly a snooker. Look at there. Only four ball. What a slice of fortune. Well, this is just a medium one rail kick. You try to kick this ball on the side, let the cue ball travel up to the end rail. Maybe get some type of tough Expansion shot for Mario if you don't make the three. If you don't figure the snooker. Oh, he's going across the table. I'd come to the end rail here. This is a shot you get a real good feeling of kicking in, believe it or not. Oh, he's going to be okay. He's going to put the three near the pocket. Watch out, cue ball. Huh? Like that Sylvester Stallone movie, Cliffhanger. It's a pretty good one. Now, Mario, who is a shot maker, believe it. Great fundamentals. And this isn't going to get up for the cut, and he needs to slow down for the bank. And it's got to kind of right in between with the four being so close to the rail. If it's off, you know, a centimeter. The bank shot is definitely on, but now I don't know. Maybe a nice little safety behind the nine. Yeah, using the six nine handily. Little swerve kick shot here. He's going to try and get the four to the back rail. May make it in the side. May get underneath it a little bit. And it's a little unlucky in what you can't predict. If that ball gets past the side, the speed looked good for the four to get to the top rail. Still didn't leave anything easy, though. You heard the beeps there come in. That's because, just a reminder, there's a 30-second shot clock now in operation from the last 16 onwards, and only one 30-second extension allowed per player per rack. We very rarely see a, a time foul, very rarely, but of course those beeps can get in the head and be very distracting. But not a lot is distracting Mario He at the moment. He did have one very beneficial roll of the ball. Yeah, he but look at this. A four-timer. Joshua Phillip off to a bright and breezy start. Since then, the next four racks have all gone to his Austrian opponent. You know, the last... The 256 player event we had was the UK Open at the Copper Box Arena in East London. On that occasion, Mario He went out at the quarter final stage. I know he was very disappointed at that. He wants to go at least one more step here. Yeah, and he seems pretty calm. You can see the heart beating a little bit. Big, you know, the chest moving. Some Good breathing right there, age 29. His nine ball ranking, sixth, two times World Cup pool champion. Yes, and because of his live nine ball ranking of six, if he were to lift this trophy, his debut in the Moscone Cup might be Rack six. forthcoming. That's right, I mean, a lot of points at hand. There's still a couple other ranking events before the US Open that are smaller. 
within the U.S. Open is the grand prize that's left for this year and a huge impact. I'll tell you, these are going to clear, it looks like. He's got a chance to extend that lead. Now the 3-7. Uh, kind of dressed up a little bit for a combination, so he's in a good position. I think he's in a good spot here on the one. He can just go forward, take a little cut shot on the two down the rail, and get back out to the center of the table for that combination on the three seven. I probably wanted a couple more inches out of the cue ball there, but I don't think it's going to slow the big guy down. Extension. Extension, please. I'm surprising. He didn't expect the cue ball to spread that much. I think he expected to be by the eight a little bit more. And I kind of was wondering when the big mistake was coming. I don't think I would label that a huge mistake, but everything seems a little bigger when you're facing filler as far as the mistakes. Is there a kiss shot on the seven here, possibly? Now he's just going to try and get the three to the back rail. Nice shot. I think he tries to get the three down by the nine, bringing the cue ball over by the purple five. Playing the snooker with the maybe the five, but the eight and nine. Get the eight and nine into play. Just going to leave a gap. Oh, pretty nice shot there. Wow, great camera view. Yes, Mario, he can clearly see the three ball. He can't see the potting angle, mind you. And he'll just I believe he can get at all of it. So he should cue downward on the cue ball here, trying to stick the rock while he banks the three around table. I oh, cut it too much. He's going to need a little luck. And it did get some of that fortune. Yes, he's having some run. There's no doubt about it. But of course, that run can change in the blink of an eye. And when it does, Phil is capable of a barrage of racks. Right, cue ball up underneath the five. And he doesn't want this three to get near the pocket. He knows that makes it a much more makeable ball, whether it's a, a swerve shot, a kick shot. I doubt the jump cue's coming out. Not, not as much of an underdog to make this as some people think. Players get a great feel for this type of shot. He'll have a lot of speed on it. I might be tempted to go downstairs and ask Mario V for the lottery numbers at the moment. Well, we all get fortune. Filler gets it too at times. The key is take advantage of it. Uh oh, he's going to give up a shot. Just shows what a fickle game nine ball is. At times this week, he's looked unbeatable, Joshua Filler. Now he is officially susceptible to defeat. Yes, it's a, a lengthy race to 11. And there's an opportunity 
room for manoeuvre. But this is worrying. And it seems the table's breaking a little more. A little out of line with the cue ball here. It seems the table's breaking a little more like it did all week in this match. And kind of feel like that if he does get out here, the four game lead seems like a lot. But I'll tell you one thing that Filler does better than anyone, in my opinion, is he leaves the mistakes behind. Some players, no matter how great they are, if they make a couple mistakes, it costs them a few games. They can really let that linger at times here. As soon as Josh gets a shot, it seems like uh, everything else is history. to be the master of this universe. Well, right now, Joshua Filler is in trouble. What an unexpected scoreline, Mario He, 5 1 up Thank you. on the Rack 7. The hero Mario of Heath to break. German Paul Joshua Filler, who won the first rack ever since, has played a supporting role. Pretty sound break off there. Did get snookered. So again, we're in another push out situation. I think 
And Mario, he's defense here on this push out. The 2 8 may be tied up. A lot of times when you have to push out, you'll tie a ball up. Kind of like when you trail in other sports, you're trying to lengthen the game a little bit anytime you're in a bad position. And what he's looking at is maybe a jump to play a safety or something like that. Looked like he had a pretty full snooker on the one. And you got to try to figure out. Push out. One thing you can't do is you really can't put the cue ball in a position where a filler can attack. We've seen filler miss a few safeties. Saw the graphic on that earlier. Missed three safety errors. Has had three safety errors already early in this match. I don't know if Filler sometimes recognizes some of the shots that the other guys recognize in these situations, like banking the one across, just simply going down by the seven, using the five as a snooker. It's not too difficult of a play and can be very effective. Now that seven ball looming, I think that's kind of maybe what Mario's shooting at, just the one across, yeah, just like that. Like, And that's what I mean. I don't know if Filler recognizes some of these easy safeties at times to be passing it, all these rollouts up. And when I played most of my professional career, we were always told by the better players, you know, the Hall of Famers and the vets, we rarely pass rollouts up. And now the one may come out a little bit. Oh, nice kick shot, Josh. Does have enough of the one to maybe get it somewhat behind the two and the eight. Cue ball up behind the nine. Oh, that looks a little light, maybe. Okay, not bad, not bad. I think the eight's got him cut off a little bit. Now the long rail kick isn't terrible. The cross corner kick isn't terrible. As far as trying to go to the bottom rail with the cue ball and kick the one across, sending the cue ball upstairs. Like that, ooh, he hit it too thin. Could fluke the seven though. <coughs> Been one of those matches for Filler up to now. Yeah, and I think that Mario would cue it so funny he could put a little left English on this, certainly make the one and go into the 2 8 with the cue ball. Extension, please. But since he's going to have the back end of the cue elevated, he may want to stay away from any side spin. That could cause a lot of curve on the cue ball and a big problem. So just straight high ball. Take what you get after pocketing into one. Yeah, and that's that's what you don't want against filler. When it went three one, four one, now five one. We were looking, weren't we, for a, a possible turning point. Have we just witnessed one? Well, like I was talking about earlier, it seems the table's gotten a little more, in the racking part of it, a little more like what we've seen the entire week. So, you know, I think we're still going to have a lot of tactical pull, of course. Run out is still the biggest part of the game, and it always will be. And I think Josh is going to have to improve on the safety side of things or maybe some choices at times. Because, of course, Mario did have a little leak, in, a little leak in the engine right there on that one ball, but I don't expect many more mistakes from, from Mario at all. Yeah, 
Your fans. assessment is absolutely right, of course, Jeremy. Tactics are important, but the chief currency in pool is the ability to knock them in, and there's no one better than Joshua Filler. Can he sustain it, though, and bring about a full-scale recovery? I'll tell you what, he's used to doing so well. Look at this, World Pool Masters champion already, UK Open champion also. The World Nine Ball Championship, that was Filler's biggest disappointment. He was beaten in the quarterfinals. The eventual winner was his great rival, Shane Van Boning. Now it's the, the European Open. Of course, Germany did not win the, the World Cup of Pool. But Filler has two more opportunities after Rocket. this to make his name even more in matchroom events at the US Open. Rocket. The tournament he's thirsting for success in again. And then the Moscow kneecap. He said the world, uh-oh, cue ball. Oh, a lovely kiss there. I know he's going to give up a shot, but it looked like it would have been ball in hand, and this actually kind of looks like ball in hand for Mario He and, and a much different breaking than we saw earlier from Filler, and I think that's more of the table, I think. But you said his biggest disappointment. I think it was his only disappointment, really, on the singles end of 2022. Gold medal at the World Games just a month ago. Yeah, by my reckoning, Jeremy, with the assistance of AZ Billiards, I reckon he's played in 15 tournaments this year, and he hasn't been worse than tied ninth. Yeah, and he doesn't play in anything but the toughest tournaments in the world. Not a whole lot of cue ball move movement needed here in the first several shots. Most of the balls grouped down here on the bottom end of the table. The most work will be from the eight to the nine, maybe the seven, eight, seven to the eight, then eight to the nine. It's like he wants to go forward a little bit. Probably get about uh, 18 inch bounce off the rail. Something like that. Quite get that much, but that's fine. Angle kind of fooled me a little bit. Looks like he just pinched the cue ball back on the seven where he's standing. A little shake of the head because he got a little straighter than he wanted. Shouldn't be too much of a problem when the object ball's out away from the rail. Straight Extension, in please. isn't as bad as you think. Now, when you start to get on the rail with the object ball, straight in is something you want to avoid. But he's got options here. You can play for the side or the corner. I'm a corners guy for the most part. But here, I, it's not the worst thing to come back for the side, in my opinion, just because it's pretty easy. The ball draws nice with these guys. They, the great strokes they, they have. Spotting just a tad more than two and a half more balls to fill as one. Mario He, wins the one. Mario he now a little more than halfway to a victory that few would have foreseen. Joshua Filler was such such a force against Shaw. He's played so well on so many occasions this week. He's come through a couple of very tight matches as well. Everything pointed towards him being crowned as European Open champion. And yet, and yet, things can go quickly incorrect for any player, any time in nine ball, and we're seeing that here. Yeah, that's right, Phil. There's going to be a ton of players, and it's always going to be like this, that are going to be, hey, don't forget about us. Don't forget about me. I know phil has been the man, but... There's a bunch of other guys that can play top flight pool, and we're seeing it right here from Mario He. Right, nine. The storybook tale has been Mario that of Jose break. Alberto Delgado. 
He's currently 4-4 with Mieszka Fotunski on table two. Trying his level best to become one of the most surprising winners of a, a big event for quite some time. And he's obviously improved his game. Look at this cue ball getting nestled in by just above the six and the nine. One ball, not that tough of a shot, but to get back and get position on the three with such an awkward cueing and the eight in the way of forward progress off the one ball. So a decision here for Mario. So much is going right for the Austrian, including his breaking efficiency, superior to that of his opponent. Yeah, I think he's going to try and pop this a little bit to avoid the eight. So he's going to hit downward on it. Easy type of shot to overcut. Oh, he hit it nice. Caught a little bit the eight, caught a little bit the four. Still not out of the woods. A little bit jacked up over the four. Not terribly. But he's got the wrong angle. I think with a high ball, which he'd like to shoot with here, he may catch the nine. Extension, please. So Mario, he would taking advantage of a, a few, a few rolls, you know, on a few kick shots. But overall, he's earned it. He's earned this lead. Now he's going to let the stroke out, try and draw the ball to the rail and back over. The way he's free swinging right now really reminds me of that 2019 World Cup, Bill. And the spicy subtext is that if Mario He does win this match and Alvin Auschen comes through his match against Conrad Yuzhushin, they will play each other, the World Cup winning teammates, in the semi-finals tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm sure they've squared off before, just like when Mario did make that team and unfortunately couldn't play. Probably defeated Nalbin and Josh a few times that year in some key moments to gain those points, but a little longer away from the sixth than he wanted. So we'll see. I think he probably draws the ball here. Would want to flirt stunning the ball by the nine some kind of way, accidentally clipping the nine and losing the cue ball. A little rail first shot here, maybe. Rail first a lot of times just makes it easy to gain, you know, easy speed on the cue ball to get back around for the nine. And we all know when the ball's in the pocket and you're kind of flat on it, it can be a little funny in position. Looks like perfect speed. May run to the rail, though. Yeah, we always know when nerves are high, cue ball on the rail can be a difficult thing. Arguably the most important shot of the match. It wasn't clean, was it? It wasn't sweet, but it was sweet enough. Sour, though, for Joshua Fuller, who plummets 7-2 adrift.
It is the penultimate night of the inaugural you, European Rector. Open in Fulda, Very Germany. Leading seven racks to two. Joshua Fuller coming into the quarterfinals together with Shane Van Berning. I suppose co-favourite to collect this €30,000 dollar first prize. Not anymore. Mario He, 7-2 ahead. Yeah, if the seven ball slows down, that lead should extend. This is a great shot on the one. The only thing he has to make sure of, he, he really doesn't want to catch the two when entering the corner pocket with the one ball. That could make him miss position on the two. Probably kind of drag stroke ease this one in. That way, if he catches the two just a little bit, should be still okay. clean and I'll tell you the last rack he really earned it and he's getting a reward right here with this one this one not too difficult for these guys the three over the side the four over the opposite five on the bottom rail he's in a great position should be eight two here shortly Phil just occasionally all sport makes a habit of humbling its finest practitioners gives them a wake-up call makes them realize that they're not invincible maybe this is one of those very occasions filler is so dynamic he could still recover but with every rack that goes the other way the chances of that recovery diminish yeah and i'll tell you another thing that i've noticed as the table seems to be breaking from the side Mario's breaking from now versus that side that you know Josh really prospered from when he played Jason. So if he does get back to the table for the break shot, that being Josh, maybe entertains changing sides. someone to their chair dominating controlling proceedings and that's the kind of thing that filler does on a regular basis being given a dose of his own and palatable medicine 8-2 Mario He within three of a sensational result Talking about sensational, what about Jose Alberto Delgado, the mystery man 
in many respects. Well, he's 6 4 up on Mieszka Fatunski. The left handed pole is at the table now looking for a 1 9 combination, which he doesn't pull off, but he does get the, the safety. Maybe he played the safety, in fairness, lodging up behind the seven. Yeah, and he's had a couple misses that you don't expect. That combination, very routine for these guys. Had a big miss, six, six ball a couple games ago. But Delgado, I'll tell you, really improving his game and Rocky proving London. his game Mario hates a break. here at the European Open. Uh, he's giving up ball in hand oh. there, and that, that match should get a little tighter. And again, that side of the table looks like the place to go if Josh gets the chance. It's just when and, and, and if he gets the chance. Now the good thing here for Mario, he's got a super thin two ball that he will cut at because of threes over the pocket position, not really the worry. The only thing really besides a miss here is losing the cue ball in one of these six pockets. The very healthy crowd here in Fulda. They've been subdued, silenced by what they're seeing. Their man, Joshua Fuller, the great superstar, is suddenly confined to his seat. Yeah, heavy filler crowd here, but I'll tell you another thing, a very heavy pool crowd. Extension, please. Very educated. They've been great all week. Now here, it's funny when it's next to the pocket like this. Is he going to draw this two rails, or is he going to come with inside, top inside English, top right? Just needs to get above the pink four. Yeah, I like that play there. It didn't look pretty foolproof. And it gives him a really nice natural angle to come two rails to the center of the table. You can see where the real work is at now. It'll be from the six to the seven. That's what I say about Mario to start this match. He just, you know, when he gets in line, he really gets out of line. Just very, very steady player. And he has all the qualities of playing a really high, uh, you know, high powered match as well. He's kind of got the angle. You may have to think about where the eight is. You know, you don't want to come all the way down and get behind the black eight. So he may end up taking a little more cut shot on the seven because he's playing well. He doesn't want an unforced error. Got to slow down. That looks perfect to me, Phil. And the one thing that I like is he's pulling the trigger. It doesn't seem like he's really worried about what he's aiming at, what the stroke feels like. He's just swinging the cue. We all understand and appreciate Mario He's capabilities, but to do this on this stage against this rival, Simply outstanding. I'm surprised he didn't draw back to the rail there, though. I think this is a little more missable than the cut shot, believe it or not, from like the center of the table. Should be fine, though. Uh, he wins the not rack. just in total command, he's stringing together racks from the break. At the moment, Joshua Filler is powerless to stop this. His heart's desire was to win the European Open in his home country, and it seems to be slipping away. Mario He leads 9-2, and it looked so innocuous, didn't it, when in the second rack, Joshua Filler completely misjudged his attempt to nudge in the two ball off the three. Ever since, he's been playing catch-up. 
Yeah, it's funny. I mean, we don't have the stats right in front of us, and we'll have those later. But I mean, what does he pocket at 15 balls in the match? Maybe Joshua. Not a whole lot. An ugly mess of a rack over on table two. Rack 12. Mario here to break. Leading nine racks to two. Yeah, on table two. Jeska Flutunski has pulled one back against Jose Alberto Delgado. Delgado leading 6-5. Now this time the three is in, but the one doing no favours whatsoever for he. It's a measure of the excellence, the reputation built by Filler that even now he will not be feeling entirely comfortable. There is absolutely no question. That complacency will creep in, it won't, no chance. Push out call. Well, an interesting push out. Reset to 30 seconds, please. Filler <laughs> remaining in his chair, not even bothering. You've put yourself in trouble. Mario, get yourself out. That's his sentiments. This occasion, the the filler ploy to give the push out back has worked. Yeah, he's passed a lot of them, Phil, and he's got a chance to get going here, though. Just enough with the cue ball. Got a choice. He can come one rail here. He could pull the ball two rails. Looks like it's one rail. Of course, if this was early in the tournament, he would have already lost. We had races to nine on the winner's side, races to eight on the losers initially. Then the race went up to to 10, now 11, as it will be in the semi-finals, and then a race to 13 in the title match tomorrow evening. Yeah, and him and Kachi kind of went neck for neck in that Hill Hill match, but his old friend, did he beat 9-8? Vols. He trailed many games at many times. I don't remember the exact scoreline, but it wasn't quite this many, and this is going to be hard to overcome. Yes, extremely hard. But you never say never when it comes to Joshua Filler. The thing is, he's a little bit like Ronnie O'Sullivan when he's behind. He's only a short amount of time behind, as it were. He can make up that deficit very, very quickly. And, of course, if a player like Filler gets on a roll... The sight of him dashing around the table, knocking in balls for fun, can be extremely intimidating. Absolutely. And 
the one thing Mario's made some very difficult outs. Of course, he got a couple little rolls kicking at the ball early, but that's part of pool. And don't really think, given the opportunity, Mario's going to dog it. So Filler's going to have to put a few racks together. Yeah, Fortunski. Can't imagine he's going to waste this chance either. Right, 13. To level up at by nine six racks, racks each over on table two. Okay, cue ball down here on the bottom of the table. Thin on the one, but I'm sure he's shooting. You know, the difference we've seen a lot of times in this situation on shots like this is Filler's leading matches when he's burying these balls, like the long one ball. I don't think it's going to slow him down. Is he going four rails? Oh, sweet, sweet stroke. Sports, and there's never been anyone more measured than the six times world snooker champion Steve Davis. Quite often, when he's fallen behind, I've seen him really up his pace to try and give himself a, a buzz, try and get himself going. Now, Filler has always been quick. If he can start to rattle off a few racks, this is most certainly not over. It was 9-2. It's now 9-4. My advice, don't go anywhere.
sometimes the script in sport is torn up. Rack 40. Thrown to the four winds. Is that going to be to the case here? The four ball dropping in aided Joshua Filler, but the two most certainly doesn't. And took a hair of speed off that break. And I still think he may entertain changing sides. Mario, he has really had a lot of success from the other side of the box. You can see from the overhead the new break box that we're using. Can't break outside of it, can't go to the side rail, making things much more difficult. Now we've talked about some, Push out you know, odd, maybe suspect even push out choices at times for for Josh. Now he's the one pushing out and he pushes out to the kick. And I don't think Mario's going to pass it. I think with the nine four lead, he's supposed to take this on. I know a lot would say, well, I have a nine four lead. I shouldn't take it on, but. There's a little different mentality at the top level as long as he doesn't feel the eights in the way and it doesn't appear so. I'd have to take my chances to maybe try and end the match right here kick this ball in run out try and break and run out to get to the semifinals. You got to stay aggressive here. I mean, you got to be a favorite to kick this ball in, I believe, unless he thinks the eight's a problem. Now, if he, he feels like that Josh has got a cue a little closer to the pocket and, and, and English this ball in some kind of way, well. Yeah, that's what I saw. I'm really, really surprised that Mario passed that shot. And even the nuance of the, the cue ball just flicking off the green six to hold on the two, that helped as well. Yeah, and the two wasn't ever that far away from the one. So, you know, if someone snookers you, just imagine that. If you're Mario and someone snookers you, you're just kind of salivating at a kick shot like that. So, and especially the score, I think he gets to end the match maybe, you know. Joshua's looking to kick that ball in and then run some racks behind it. Make this a real contest. Well, anyone can make mistakes, but when Joshua Filler misses an open ball like that, that is a rarity. That's the definition of a rarity. OK, he had to come across a couple of times for the green six, but even so, who could have forecast that, Jeremy? No, it's almost like a tremor in the earth when he misses a ball like that. Just kind of everyone feels it. And you wonder, what was that? It's something you just don't expect. And he really did what he needed to do, kicking the one in, get himself going. Now Mario's just got to maintain it. Nothing too difficult here for this guy. And I know Mario's super happy to get back at the table after passing on that, that rollout and seeing Josh kick that one in. Due to the very nature of this sport, it's almost impossible to completely dominate. But this, this is something else again. It's 10 4. Joshua Filler, one rack away from elimination. Mario He on cloud nine. Is the, the five ball that didn't just shock this crowd, it stunned them. And, and he had gotten a little straight on the three ball. Sorry about that feel. And it just made him take a little more of a shot. We talk about it 
you know, you can equate it to a few other things. You know, maybe Wimbledon. You know, the court gets pretty nasty as the two weeks go by. The, t the pockets get a little tougher here as the week goes on. So, Mario, he in a great position now. This is the key. Your last break, don't back off. Right, Let me 15. quickly tell you, Jose Alberto Delgado right, and Mieszka Flutinski on table right two. 7-7. Seven, seven. Keenly contested there. This much more one-sided. He will want to win this as swiftly as he possibly can. Nothing down. So we're going to see a lot more of killer filler before this match ends. Both matches on pace, 14 games played on each table. Uh, six, six, seven's a little nasty near the three ball. So we'll see how he tries to take care of that later in the rack. Really seeing a way to take care of it early in the rack. If he happens to fall on the three, maybe short side, like say he comes back side of this, but I don't see that happening. Well, this could get a little funny right here. Should be okay, but he's close to it, so accuracy should be at a premium. Definitely thin. He's going to get on top of this ball. This could hurt. Getting position on the five. Very tricky now. Actually, somehow got a two rail angle to maybe come at this six seven. Don't think it plays in the lower left. Uh, he's missed it. He knows he's overhit it if it did play in the lower right. Good thing is, he's got a pretty easy safety here to put him behind the seven. This is the thing, you know, Josh knows he's got to dodge a few of these kick shots from Mario. Mario's such a big lead. If he can make contact on this six, I would go at it with a subtle speed. If I felt comfortable with the hit, with the eight being there, all kinds of ways to come away with the snooker. Extension, please. You may have to swerve this a touch anyways, and that kind of goes with, a li you know, a lighter swing of the cue. He can hit the right side of it, get behind the eight. He can hit the left side of it, bump the six by the eight. Lots of good things here. It's the type of shot you just get a feel for. Just like that. A little heavy with the cue ball, but a good effort. can do a fella is take it step by step. This could get a little dicey if it gets straight on the rail. Okay, does have a little angle. Exasperated. Please. He's normally so smooth. His position is normally so pinpoint. If it was anyone else, this might seem a little stupid. But I'm saying it anyway. Don't write off Joshua Filler. He was six down, seven to play. Now, he's got one on the board, and maybe that's the start of a sustained fight back. Mario He, hoping against hope, that's not the case. No, and it seems the table's changing just a hair, like it's grabbing just a touch. 
you know, as the table wears in a little more as the week goes by, you'll that'll be the case. And Biosko Portuski grabbing a lead. It's been a while. He may have had a 1 0 lead or a 2 1 lead early in the match, but other than that, it's been Delgado, Delgado out front. Joshua Fuller to break trailing by 10. Needs a few break and runs to really apply the heat. And he's changing sides, Phil. I think this is a smart move. Yeah, balls seem to be going in from over there. Yeah, it's better to be successful than stubborn. Absolutely. Or at least give yourself a chance. I mean, he's seen balls go in from Mario. Mario probably has four break and runs in this match, maybe five. And he's got to play a little. Maybe where the cue ball's at now would be a nice place to get. We'll see if he goes past the six. Oh, he's going to go past the six maybe, and I don't know if he's going to get there. Kind of let up on the stroke a little bit, and you could see overcut the one. Wanted to go much deeper. Maybe a spin shot, but can he get around the eight? I think he can certainly coax the two in, can't he? And the six doesn't pass the nine, so he may have to elevate the cue here or run the cue ball forward and take a big cut on the six. It looks like he's elevated the cue. Oh my. We always talk about the side pockets. No forgiveness there. It was Joshua Fuller's dream to win this inaugural European Open, considering its location. Now it's turning into something of a nightmare. Something he's not accustomed to, missing balls, being heavily beaten. And Josh has two, two misses that none of us will forget, but hats off to Josh for one heck of a tournament, and hats off to Mario He for one hell of a match. Filler's dream is about to end. It wasn't a great performance by the German, but congratulations to Mario He through to the semi final of a matchroom promoted tournament, the majors in the game, for the first time ever. He will be delighted by that scoreline. He's beaten Joshua Filler 11 5. And in the semi-finals tomorrow, he will play Conrad Yazushin or his World Cup partner, Albin Aushin.